welcome to Archaeologists Behaving Badly. I'm Raquel. And I'm Belle. And this is episode six. Which will be a little bit of a shorter one. Yeah, so it's kind of a new thing, a new series called Trial and Error. Yeah, where we will just talk about accidental discoveries or like fuck-ups or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. All right. You're gonna go I'm going to go first. Yeah. Oh, before I start, I just wanted to talk really quickly about this particular painting behind us. So we film, it, if you're watching the YouTube, you'll be able to see it. If you're listening, you won't. But we film in one of my jobs is working at an antiques auction house. And there were much prettier paintings to choose. But I chose this one because I have noticed in from working in antiques that there are are a lot of 19th century oil paintings that depict, they're always called like young lovers in the garden or something like that, Um, but they depict what I perceive to be a sexual assault. (laughs) So I chose this one. If you're um, listening and you can't see, oh, there is a, there is a horse, a Chinese horse in the way. So this one, um, is in a, it's a waitress in a tavern, I guess. She's like trying to bring food out and there's a guy just trying to mac on her and she's like a kind of like half laughing, which if you're a woman, we've all been there where you're just like, <laughs> um, um, please no. just let me, can you let me get past? And he's like, no, 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 like give me a kiss. Yeah. Um, and I just thought it was funny um sexual assault is not funny no. but it's funny that it's a really common theme in 19th century paintings yeah where there's always like a guy trying to make out with a woman and she's like uh, please stop please stop no yeah cool yeah. so I just wanted to like a quickly starting off, starting off on a real positive that. note <laughs> um okay trial and error so I've chosen two quite short ones the first one I've chosen is the very famous terracotta army in China. There you go. Which was discovered by accident. I had no idea. No, me yeah. either. Yeah. Um, so it was discovered in 1974, which I also didn't know, like a very recently. I thought it was discovered ages no, ago. No, very recently. Okay. <laughs> um, local farmers in I'm going to say Jean, it's spelt X-I-A-N, and I have no idea how to actually pronounce it, so I'm just going to say yep. Jean. Yeah, um, sounds good. They were, they decided to dig themselves a well. Okay. And while they were digging, they found one life-sized soldier made of terracotta. A sculpture? Mm-hmm. Have you been to China? I haven't. No, me neither. I would like to go. Yeah, yeah. Um mainly to see the terracotta yeah, army. Yeah, 100%. And also, like, we we talked about it off air before, <laughs> but, like, there are a lot of pyramids in China and no one really knows anything about them. No one talks about no them. No one talks about them. They're not, like, um, there's no published research about them and they're all kind of hidden, but there are pyramids all over China. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so they were digging a well. So then they've reported it mm-hmm. um, and archaeologists are sent there to excavate. Right. So by, I think, like 1976, they had excavated 8,000 life-sized foot soldiers, archers and charioteers. Yeah. Um, as well as like horse remains yeah. and and other stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise it was that many. A lot. Shit. Yeah. 8,000. Yeah, and That's I think a huge. lot of them were broken, but okay. they've, they've been, like, reassembled. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were dating to around 210 BCE. Shit. So just over 2,000 years old. Yeah. They had been buried with, again, forever a theme <laughs> – Mispronunciation, that's what we're good at. If there's one thing we're good at, (laughs) it's not saying things correctly. (laughs) 
So they were buried with Kin Shi Wang, Shi Wang Di, who was the very first emperor of China. Oh, there you go. They're his grave goods. So like the guy who like kind of unified yeah. the area. He unified all of the warring provinces of China and that's why he was the first emperor. Isn't this the guy that was depicted in the newest – is it the newest or the second? I think it's – I third. don't know what you're about to say. Sorry. <laughs> Just say it, Raquel. Um, Indiana Jones, the the newest Indiana or like the – I think the Indiana newest Jones. Indiana Jones movie, yeah, and it's it's based in China and it's, it's about – um, the mm-hmm. emperor coming back to life to be immortal. No, because the newest Indiana Jones is the Crystal Skull. So it must be the one before that. Or it might be the mummy. No, it was definitely – oh, no, you're right. It it's the, the mummy. mummy. My bad, Wh- wrong. Where they have a replacement yeah. actress for yeah. Rachel Weisz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, the mummy, that's what I was mummy. thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, and they like depict – Yeah. Yeah, they depict the the emperor and the first emperor and he's trying to become immortal and stuff. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's – Yeah. I think the same I guy. Think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was known for being incredibly brutal. Okay. Um, but also accomplished great things for the new kind of unified mm-hmm. region, um, standardising units of measurement, which okay. we talked about with India. We but did, that was like, yeah. They did it like 2,000 years before. Yeah. Um, Building roads and canals and building – well, initiating the building of the Great Wall. That was Ah, him. No way. I thought that was after. I thought that was – They didn't finish it until way later. Right. But But it started. started Right. Okay. Cool. Um, He had a fanatical fear of death. And he was obsessed with a quest for immortality. Okay. So this like is... a lot of crazy leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Even into the 20th century. 100%. Obsessed. So yeah. that's kind of the reasoning for this completely ridiculously elaborate tomb and and the grave goods yeah. being so enormous is that yeah. he was obsessed with surviving yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. And thought that if he had a fucking army, yeah, that he could beat it. He, yeah, wow, that he could live forever. I mean, it's a great plot for another mummy movie, so I understand True. why they took it. <laughs> Bring back Brendan Fraser. We oh my god, him. please! What a sweetheart. I love him. <laughs> um, so one of them, um, like aside from there being so many of them, one of the amazing things was like the level of detail that went into each soldier. Yeah. All of the faces were individual. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, The amount of work that would take for all the people that are like making these sculptures to, you know, you can't make a mould basically because they have to be all different. They would have been probably created on real people even if they weren't soldiers themselves yeah. just to make them each individual. Yeah. Um, individually modelled in clay. They had really detailed armour including like they put even like the treads of their shoes in. That's crazy. Um, Were they coloured? No. They weren't. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I'm saying that as if I know the answer but <laughs> I actually don't. Um, but I don't think that they were. Okay. Um. Each of them stands up to two metres tall and weighs up to 300 kilos. Jesus. Um, And today the terracotta army is regarded as the eighth wonder of the ancient (gasps) world. So cool. And I read, I didn't actually, so like we may have done this one in a little bit of a rush, but so I didn't read about where the stuff is stored. Yeah. But there is a museum of terracotta warriors. Yeah. I'm not sure that all of the ones in there are original though. Okay. I think that they had artisans like recreate yeah. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because I'm pretty sure from memory I think I've seen photos of them 
and it looked like it was kind of like an outdoor museum yeah, slash like site. with the cover. Yeah, with can... the cover, but it was still open yeah. kind of thing. But I'm not sure if those are real or yeah. if they've been like recreated. Yeah, well, it would make sense if they were recreated. And it definitely didn't look like, from my memory, I could be totally wrong, but it didn't look like there were 8,000 of them. Mm. It might have just been like a portion of them. Or, yeah. And a recreated portion of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, that I mean, I could talk about them forever. I won't because I didn't write anything more than that. But the second one that I have is, so it's actually paleontology, not archaeology. Okay. But I included it because I had never heard of it before and it's fucking crazy. Okay. Um, we love a bit of paleontology. Yeah. Yeah. I used to love dinosaurs and <laughs> animals and stuff. So old things. in 19, yeah, we love old things. We love that's, old things. That's why we do what we do. Exactly. Um, in 1986, Romanian workers were testing the ground for a power plant. Okay. And they hit a cavern. Okay. That ended up being a really big cave. Okay. Um, it's now called the Moville Cave. Okay. In Romania. Mm-hmm. So the cave prior to them opening it had been sealed and like totally enclosed okay. for almost five and a half million years. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my God. It had developed its own ecosystem. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I'd never heard of it before. That's so cool. With like creepy crawlies and was filled with toxic gas. Gases. The air when they opened it, the air stank of burning rubber and rotten eggs because it was filled with hydrogen sulfide. I was gonna say sulfur. Yeah, yeah, and carbon dioxide. So, when it was like investigated properly, they discovered that fifty-seven species were living in it. Were they new species? Thirty-seven had never been seen by humans before. <gasps> That's insane, isn't it? Imagine being like. The person who's into... You have to come up with so many different names. I know, but how cute. Yeah. And being like, holy shit. And it just kind of shows evolution as yeah. well. Like, you know, when you're... That it's evolved completely separately to anything that was happening yeah. on the surface of the earth. Um, do you know how it was like... Do you know how it was closed? Like, you know, was it just like... Okay, yeah. No, so we don't, don't know how know. long. Yeah. Um, but because there was no sunlight... All the species had evolved to have no pigment and no eyes. Crazy. Because it didn't need them. Because they were just in pitch black. Yeah. There were no plants, um, I suppose, because there's no sun and plants yeah. need the sun. Yeah. Um, so all of the species survived on eating each other or eating um, – there was methane and sulfur oxidizing bacteria – which lived in like a frothy layer on top of there was like a body of water. Yeah, like okay. A kind of lake yeah, okay. type thing in yeah. there. Um, and oh. some of the creatures in there were leeches, spiders, <gasps> scorpions, wood lice, centipedes and one type of snail. So – all of the things. All of the creepy crawlies. That I fucking hate. <laughs> oh, my God. That is literally my worst nightmare. Glad I wasn't that person. <laughs> that's crazy. So those are the animals. So I guess, you know, when you put in that environment, that's it, what comes out. Yeah. They made it work over however many thousands and oh millions of years. All the gross ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you like them. I just. I like them. Yeah, I know. You're into. My best friend actually. Hi, Casey. <laughs> um just recently bought herself a pet scorpion. Really? Yeah. Scorpions I think I can do. <laughs> it's the spiders that I can't. You, you can handle it? No. But cute. A scorpion, a pet scorpion. She recently, she sent me videos as well. It's fucking hilarious. Um, very late at night. So she has the scorpion. She has crickets. Yeah. to feed the scorpion, like live crickets. Yeah. And she felt bad that they were just in like in a container. So she built like two separate containers and connected them by an egg carton. Okay. And like taped it all together. But she didn't do it properly. Uh-uh. So she woke up <gasps> and there was 
crickets like all over her house. Oh my god! And she spent I don't know how many hours trying to like catch all the crickets because they'd just escaped and got into everything. Anyway, that has nothing to do with archaeology, <laughs> but I just that's cool. Of that. <laughs> I like. Um, well, we both like snakes. We do. That's our thing. Yeah. Um, I used to have a snake when I was sixteen. Did you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Didn't know Called him Sykes. Sykes? Yeah. Sykes the snake. What Sykes kind? the snake. He was a Victorian carpet python. Nice. Um, yeah, I named him after a lead singer of a band that I used to <laughs> I just nearly spat my wife yeah. out. <laughs> that I used to listen to. Um, yeah, um, but he was super cute and he, he got quite big. Um, what happened to him? So he – so I pretty much lived with my – ex-boyfriend at the time my first boyfriend and it was his snake but he got them at the same time that I kind of came around right. so it, I knew him for like two and a half years until we split up and then obviously he took him and and I didn't but I think he died a few years after that from oh. lymphoma of all things really that's what I heard in the grapevine <laughs> but um but yeah so I think he lived for like five I think we had – I think at least he had had him for five years or something. Okay. But he was so cute. Like we used to take him out every night and he used to just crawl to like, you know, the the warmest part of yeah. you and just have little naps on you. It was very cute. I was never – I wanted reptiles but I was never allowed because my dad is a snake catcher, a yeah. venomous snake catcher here in Australia. And, and we have a lot of snakes we, here. We do have a lot of venomous snakes here. <laughs> It's always a bit of concern yeah. for my family because my dad is just out there doing the catching thing. them, doing the thing, but he's very against them being in captivity. Yeah. So I was never allowed. To. Yeah, which is totally fair enough. Yeah. I totally feel that way now, but yeah. I guess as a 16-year-old, no, I, I didn't I, feel that I way. I know heaps of people have. Yeah. Even, like even with my friend who has the scorpion. Yeah. She's like. I'm going to get another terrarium so that he's just not in one. Yeah. So that he can like move around and have different environments to, him around to be in. And, yeah. Yeah, because they're not like, as we learn studying archaeology, yeah. like there's a massive difference between domesticated animals that have been domesticated over hundreds or thousands of years. Absolutely. And non animal, yeah, yeah, and animals that we just decide that we want to keep as a pet. <laughs> yeah. When it's like, okay, but. It's not a pet. Like, yeah. Have you heard? You can't of, have a fucking crocodile as a pet. No. Like, People have, and here in Australia, that yeah. has definitely happened. Or big um, cats, or yeah. like, it's, it's something a bit icky about it to me. It's a yeah. little bit. It's a little bit wrong. Have you heard about? I don't know which spider it is, but it keeps little frogs. Yes. Have you heard about that yes. as pets? And I can't get over that. I think that is just the cutest, weirdest, most funniest thing. I cannot feel like I have the picture of the meme or whatever yeah. in my head, but I can't for the life of me remember why it keeps frogs as pets. I, th I think it's because the frogs eat the like the the lice or like the little okay. the, the little bugs that attack the uh, nest or well, something yeah, like I th that. I think, yeah, I think something okay. to do with the nest. Yeah, and so. The, sp the spiders were just like, well, all right, let's just keep this tiny little mini frog as a, as a pet, feed it, and just have like a symbiotic kind of yeah. cute little friendship. It has nothing to do with what our podcast is about, <laughs> but I all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I want to know all about all of the animals that keep other animals as pets. You know what? We should definitely do that. We should definitely <laughs> do a little a bit. Bar. I think we should do a little bit next episode about okay. that. <laughs> all right. Yeah, nice, awesome. <laughs> Got a little bit of off topic, but that's fine. That's fine. It's really fine. It's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so I have a couple of finds that mm -hmm. were completely by accident. Yeah, cool. So there weren't any archaeologists trying to find these things. It was just random people stumbling upon some pretty cool shit, basically. Awesome. Um, so there's a really famous one, a really famous find, a person that mm -hmm. was found mm -hmm. called Etsy. Have you Etsy, Etsy, yes, Etsy. the Iceman. Yeah, the Iceman. Yeah, I I remember as an eight-year-old getting my parents to buy me archaeological like books, like you know the really expensive ones that were like 
big books and they just had archaeological discoveries in them and no I like I got given lots of Egypt stuff yeah but not I used to I used that to kind of stuff I used to I used to drag my parents into bookstores and be like I want this one and they were like <laughs> expensive like $80 books and they're like really and it was kind of like a treat anyway and I remember like looking through my first one and, and he was in there and I was obsessed with him cool yeah so um his name's Ertzi. Um, he was named after the Alps. So there was, yeah, so this guy Ertzi, um, he was discovered in 1991 okay. by two. Again, I didn't know that he was found that recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Again, I, yeah, I thought maybe in the 30s yeah. or like the 20s. No, it was only in 1991. So this, this. Body that was found was found in 1991, named Ötzi, by two German tourists who were hiking okay. the Ötzl Alps on the Austrian-Italian border. Okay. So that's why his name's Ötzi because – I don't know why the hell I thought he was Siberian. Well, cold climates. Yeah, I've just – It kind of – that makes sense to okay, me. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just thought – it's cold. Yeah. It must be Siberia. <laughs> must be up like way up north. Yeah. Um, no, so it was on the Austrian-Italian border and he was accidentally, com- like completely accidentally stumbled upon um, and by this couple. And the couple happened upon him and at first they thought he was fresh because they were like, holy shit, um, this isn't that old, you know, and immediately told authorities as soon as they got back, you know, to town. And so the authorities came down, they had a look. Um, the body was frozen in ice, particularly from below the torso. So everything up from the tor- – like from about here was um, visible. Okay. Was, you know, obviously – so it looks like the ice had melted and had just kind of exposed the torso. Okay. And his head and, and stuff and his arms as well. Um, so, um, I think that at the time it was like terrible weather. And so the authorities needed to get through it pretty quickly because you don't want something like this exposed for too long. Yeah. And also, um, when you've got bad weather coming in, like you just have to quickly get it out. So they had to use like pickaxes and anything that they could. And also it's pretty remote. You're talking about the Alps. So it's, you yeah. know, you're not, it's not easy to just They don't bring... want to get stuck up there. Of course not. Yeah. yeah. So it was happening pretty quickly. Uh, anyway, so they get him out and an archaeologist was brought on board because I think the authorities looked at him and was like, I don't think it's that fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's kind of old. I think he's a little bit old, right? And um, so the archaeologist analysed him and it turns out he was actually 5,000 years old. Real old. Real old. But he was naturally mummified by the ice. Cool. So, again, something that we've talked about multiple episodes is the different types of mummification that yeah. can happen. You're not just – it's not just Egyptian. No, it's not the embalming. In. Totally, yeah. yeah. Um, so they did all this analysis on him. He weighed 50 kilograms. He was about 45 years old and about five foot three. Little man. A little man. We love um, a short king. Yeah. <laughs> short king. Um, and he looked like he was covered in ice shortly after death. Okay. So this happened all pretty quickly. He must have died. He got stuck in a blizzard or something. Probably, yeah. And analysis of his teeth and the pollen, um, dust, uh, pollen and dust grains – showed that he grew up near present-day South Tyrol. Tyrol. I don't know if that's in Austria or in, or in like, one of the border villages in it, um, in Italy, but likely I, I, I would assume. So not far from where he died. I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking not. I could be wrong, but that's where I think. Um, the analysis of his stomach remains showed that he ate two meals so before he died, there was at least two meals in his stomach mm-hmm. left and he ate meat and uh, that included um, uh, deer meat and herb bread. He also had really high levels of copper and arsenic 
found in his hair. So you can do analysis on on your hair. Yeah. Yeah. But the copper in his hair was so pure that they think that the only way that he could have had that there was if he was actually a copper smelter. So he was – that was his That's job. That's so interesting. Yeah. This is the cool thing about archaeology um, presently, you know, in the past few decades is that we can – The kind of analysis that yeah, we do. We can see where people are from, what they ate. That's kind of a thing we can do now. Yeah. Um, what they – like now what they did. I mean why else would you have that pure copper? Yeah. Well, you know? I, I guess like archaeology itself is kind of known as a bit of a pseudoscience because totally. we just like – Academics grab, don't like to call it that, but – No, yeah. <laughs> but like we just kind of get as many – like it's been described like this before where you have a puzzle but you don't have all the pieces and so yeah. you're just trying to like – Piece make, it together. Make the picture based on the information you have. But we rely really heavily on on hard science. Yeah, yeah. To establish those puzzle pieces. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, most times we don't have those kind of analyses or we don't have the material that can give us this kind of information. Yeah. So sometimes our analyses are a lot less... Solid, you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> we like to we like to create a bit of a story. Generally yeah. speaking, yeah. you know that's a part of our job is to kind of as best as we can with yeah. what we have. Yeah, make you know some kind of narrative up to kind of make it like make sense. But I think with this guy, it's a little bit different. I think yeah. because of the mummification, because he was frozen in ice, and he wasn't just frozen naked. He was frozen. With other stuff cool. too. Tell us about the other stuff. Tell me more. <laughs> um, so they could also tell a lot from his uh, about his health from his body and his health wasn't great. He had a whipworm. What's that? Which is an intestinal parasite, which I can imagine was probably a pretty normal thing back then. Yeah especially if you're eating like deer meat and all these different meats and if it's not cooked properly and I can imagine that being a thing. Um, yeah, whipworm, I've never heard of. Whipworm. Yeah. Um, his ribs were cracked. So either three or four of his ribs were cracked huh. when he died. So potentially this is how he died. Maybe he fell from somewhere. Oh. Maybe... You, you know, maybe something happened where he kind of fell or something attacked him, attacked or... him or hit him or something. But, yeah, three or four of his ribs were cracked and he was face down after death. Okay. So maybe something moved him or environment moved him or something. Yeah. Um, there were lines on his fingernails. So this is some kind of analysis, I guess, that they do looking at the fingernails which showed that he had been sick three times in the past six months before he died. So I guess there's like some kind of tell yeah. on, on your nails that if you've going through like a tough health period or something like that. And another thing that I remember reading about in this big book that I forced <laughs> my parents to buy me that was far too expensive for an eight-year-old, um, he had 61 tattoos. On his body, all over his body. Amazing. Yeah, which consisted of like lion work. So they were just different different um, tattoos with like lions basically. I'm going to look up what they look like. Yeah, I think we should do an episode on, on tattoos. Tattoos. Okay, and yeah. we definitely have to. Definitely have to. Um, they were, he was also found, I always thought, I guess, from the photos that I saw that he was naked and I just assumed that his belongings or like the clothing had um, had disintegrated. Like before it got frozen. Yeah, yeah. Or like at some point during that period. But then I guess if his body hadn't like then why would the other – Yeah. So I guess now that I'm thinking about it. Um, dumb. Maybe it's a bit <laughs> dumb. Um, um, but anyway, they found that he wore a cloak make, made of woven um, grass. He had a belt. 
and a pair of leggings. He had shoes, a loincloth and a bearskin cap as well as a leather chin strap. What's the chin strap for? I guess for the hat. Okay. I guess, I would assume. Um, Which is fucking cool because you don't often find mummies or bodies or anything with with clothes because it usually disintegrates. You only find the skeletons. No, not that long ago. 5,000 years ago. It's a very, very long time ago. Um, He was also found with a copper axe, a chert-bladed knife and a quiver of 14 bows. And I think two of those bows were complete and 12 were being worked. So I think they weren't complete yet, but I think cool. he'd been, yeah. And if he has a copper axe, like if they think that he was a copper smear. Yeah, that makes sense. He, he made it himself. Yeah, totally, which is kind of. It's really cool. Which is really lovely. And um, he was also found with two baskets mm-hmm. on him um, that had berries in it and mushrooms, which they think were medicinal purposes because they were actually able to tell which what mushrooms they were and I think okay. it it would be assumed that they had medicinal Which properties. if he had been like sick yeah. in the previous six months yeah. and he had cracked ribs and yeah. like he's obviously not doing super well. Yeah, he's clearly – he's having a bad time, yeah. you know. So that's Etsy. Awesome. Yeah, and I before <laughs> – I should probably get that book out again and probably <laughs> read it because I didn't actually know that a lot of that had actually come out that he – that he was sick and that yeah. he had two meals and that he was actually found with clothes and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Um, another site that I'm going to talk about is from Turkey. Now my handwriting is terrible <laughs> and I can't read my own handwriting. But didn't you just quite recently write this? I did <laughs> indeed quite recently wrote, write this in – in fact, it was only like 10 minutes ago. But anyway. <laughs> um, Darren Kuyu, I think. Kuya or Darren. Sorry, guys. Darren, Darren something. something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so it's in Turkey. It's an underground city that was randomly discovered in 1963 by some random guy. He was renovating his house. And he discovered a city. And he discovered a city cool. through a wall <laughs> that he randomly just tore down thinking. And was like, oh, fuck. Oh, what is this? Yeah, so he um, is renovating his house and through the renovations he finds like a passageway. So I, I just think he was just tearing down a wall or thinking like, oh, there's nothing behind this. Like, oh, yeah. And he discovers a labyrinth of caves and tunnels. Amazing. It's just like, what the fuck? Oh my god, heaven. Turn- like terrifying, but also terrifying, but also fucking cool. Like yeah. so mysterious. Turns out it's over 85 meters deep into the earth. So it's extensive. It's deep as hell. Yeah, it's deep as fuck. Um <laughs> turns out it dates back all the way back to the seventh century BC. So it's <laughs> very Fucking old. Over two and a half thousand years old. Yeah. That's crazy. And it was to it was built to protect inhabitants of up to twenty thousand people. So like not so just it's a, huge. It's huge, right? It's a labyrinth. Like it just keeps going. And it had doors, it had ventilation systems, it had wells, fresh water. Rooms for kitchen, for bedrooms, for warehouses. How the hell, especially if it had ventilation systems, which would have had to go to the surface. Yeah. How the hell did it only get found in the 60s? Yeah. Crazy. So that no, no one had heard of this before. No one had seen this. By the way, this is in this um, the city of Cappadocia. Cappadocia, I think it's how you oh, I've seen it. lots of like Pinterest and Instagram. Oh, my God. That's where the hot air balloons. Oh, hot air balloons? Is that yeah. it? That's what I thought it was. Yeah. I really want to go there. Um, but, yeah, this place even had schools. It had churches. It had cellars to create oil and wine even. So they were like – Fucking set up. Now, at first, when I read this, 
I thought that it had been created but not had been used for some reason. Okay. I kind of thought that maybe it had been used for like a really short period of time. So it was more – you thought it was more of a like a safe kind of house kind, kind of like kind of thing, in case we get invaded totally. or something. Turns out it was consistently used. Like fully lived in. Well, yeah. They just lived and it in was, the ground. Yeah, it was fully formed, especially fully formed by the Byzantine era. Byzantine, Byzantine era, I think, is from like 600 or 700. Yeah. AD. That sounds right. Yeah, something around there. Um, and it was used to escape persecution from the whole period that it was. Huh. Yeah. So they had consistently kind of used it. And I think even – I didn't write this down – but I think even um, the the evidence they found in there was like multiple different languages. So like as time went on and they stopped using languages before probably around like, you know, when Christianity kind of came in and then like afterwards they kind of – yes, there's clearly archaeological evidence and inscriptions and everything to say that this was consistently used over a long period of time as a way to protect the people of the area. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. It was so – um. I have heard of it but I didn't know that – Yeah. It was so pervasive. It was that – yeah. Expensive. Yeah. That's fucking cool. That's crazy. Let's go there. Let's go there, please. <laughs> Let's go there. Yeah. I would love to go to Turkey. It's yeah. Oh, uh, I t- – Turkey's actually been on the top of my list for a long time because of Gobekli Tepe. Mm. We have to <laughs> go see Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to see – if you want to listen to or watch an episode on that, let us know. I think we just probably should. I do think it. we so just we do it anyway. Tattoos, Whatever. I don't have to fuck do what it. you guys think. Yeah. <laughs> what you want. I no, don't no. Care. We love you. <laughs> I'm joking. I swear. Um, <laughs> yeah, we should definitely do that. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been to Turkey, but it's got such an extensive history from, from you know, pre Roman occupation to Roman occupation to Byzantine, you know. Maybe to we Persian. should do our, ne- like we did our first pick a country episode on India. Maybe we should do Turkey next. Yeah. Absolutely. And China as well, I was thinking okay. from what you were talking about before because honestly, I don't know. I've done um, I've done some stuff at uni but, again, when you do stuff at uni about in archaeology, it's often very um, – you, you choose a topic and it's, it's very, very – like it's slivers of yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's like a particular time period on a particular topic, you know. Yeah. I'd love to learn more. Well, I mean, China is where – so porcelain, which is – yeah. So famous for being like French or English. Mm. It's all it's all from China. It's like Chinese. That's, that's yeah. Where they got it from. Yeah. Yeah. Like pottery is from China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the European stuff, obviously, kind of everywhere in the world was making some form of like clay vessels. Yeah. But the firing and stuff, like that's Chinese. Yeah. All right, so we have to do Turkey and China. And yeah. Let us know if you think that's a good idea. <laughs> or if you have other ideas. Yeah, you have to let us know. Yeah. And – Or well, we've said it before. I think we said it last episode or the one before. If you are an archaeologist or a paleontologist or you have crazy stories from a site that you've worked on. Yeah, did you find something you didn't think you were going to find? Maybe that's going to like work well in trial and error. Or you have a story of archaeologists behaving badly on yeah. site. We also would like to talk about that we would, stuff. We would love to talk um, about that stuff. Because that's how we kind of came up with the idea for this podcast. But then we couldn't really talk about our own stories. <laughs> that um, became very clear, very clear. <laughs> yeah. And people don't want to share stuff that often but we'll change names and yeah. site names and no stuff. one has to know no we can even change countries yeah. that you were working on we just want the nitty-gritty you crazy because we know that crazy stuff happens on sites always always yeah because archaeologists are freaks let's yeah. be honest absolutely people think we're uh, just boring nerdy no people, archaeologists are weirdos no nah, that's yeah we're fucking weird <laughs> Um, but yeah, like and subscribe, please. If you like it, if you feel like it, it helps us if you do that. Yeah, and um, I'm excited. This is gonna like we're just gonna think of more and more cool shit to talk about. Yeah, 
Yeah. There's a lot out there to talk about. Yeah. All right. We will see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.